A warm welcome and thanks for joining us online here at Gallery Church. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. I believe you're going to be blessed by today's service and it was good to tune in. Now this morning we are actually hybrid. We're both, aren't we? We're meeting online here but also in person. And the in-person meeting we're having a bit of a celebration. We're having cake, memories, celebration of sorts with its pinnacle being a beautiful bouncy castle how good is that and then we're heading over to st andrew's football ground for a time for change service which is going to be really powerful so we're having a great time in person today but you might be saying what about us online what about us i know and i feel it so we're going to be celebrating here as well last week we had our c3 conference and it was so excellent we uh, are going to have some worship from that which will be from c3 london which is great and we're going to listen to one of my favorite words over the whole conference which was from lisby warren who along with her husband steve run the europe region of C3. They oversee it together and so she brought a really amazing word, quite timely and powerful actually. But first, let's have a little look at some of the great times from the last 10 years. Trophy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only for a year. Wow. And then Melton coming for me. <laughs>
How wonderful. And over the next few weeks, we'll be continuing with the memories and the older songs and the interviews with people and key players and their stories and loads and loads more fun. Ten years of Gallery Church. We're so grateful that God has, by his grace, ministered through us and also ministered to us in this season. Thank you, Lord, for this ministry to the city and the Midlands. Lots to be thankful for. And as we go into worship today, I just want to pray us in. Now, remember, it's from C3 London, a great group down there. And this was written by Jess on the team over there. So this is a wonderful, wonderful bit of worship. And actually, in the, in the Word, in, it says this. 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34, it says, Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting, forever. How amazing is that? Whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, however busy our minds, however worried we could be, God's goodness is everlasting and strong. And so I just really pray in this worship time that we would have a moment of refocus, a, ro a moment where we look beyond our life and into the goodness of God. And I'm sure having spent some time with the Father and the overflow of goodness, we will be ministered to. Let me just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everybody gathered online today. We thank you for how you've ministered over the last 10 years. It's incredible. We pray that you would continue to minister your love and your kindness. And it would always be a signature of Gallery Church, Lord. That people would feel blessed and feel that they have had the very touch of the Father God to bless their lives and pull them through circumstances. Lord, we praise you this morning for you are good. You have always been good and your goodness is everlasting. Amen. Hey C3 Global family, so good to have you with us from wherever you're watching. We're going to worship together. Let's sing this. Your mercy never fails. Though the wind and seas may change. When I don't know what comes next.
Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that worship time. What a beautiful song. You can find that song on C3 London's YouTube page if you want to listen again. Nice to promote some of the family's stuff. Now we'll head over to The Word with Lisby Warren. As I mentioned, this is such a word in season for us. It's timely and it's powerful and profound. I pray it blesses you this morning. So anyway, I'm coming from you live from our Amsterdam building. Thank you, Mara and Nathan, um, for that really excellent insight into mental health. Actually, you're probably both watching yourselves. I can see you on the screen. I mean, you're watching yourselves actually uh, doing that interview, but it was so good. And it leads beautifully into this message that I have for us, C3 Europe. I love that sense of mental health being body, soul, and spirit. And our ability to learn to be self-aware on that whole uh, arena of life is so important. So thank you for that. I love the way everything in this conference is building one thing onto another. And I really trust that this will build you this message. Thank you, Gosha. This is heaven's hug to you. <laughs> and my a thousand hugs to all of you. I miss you so much. Um, I, I can't wait for being able to see you all individually. So super exciting. Um, I have a word for us in the next uh, 23 minutes about, oh, it's a word in season that I have been working through, uh, probably for my own personal life, for where I'm at in my season, but also uh, it's a word that I've been ministering out of and talking to people about because I feel it's something so important for this season that we're in. Uh, and I'll tell you how it got triggered. This message got triggered by one thing that I saw, and yes, if you know me, you know that I love the series, The Chosen. And I was watching this mini series, The Chosen, where Jesus is ministering to Mary. He meets her for the first time and he says over her life, Mary, fear not, for I have redeemed you. And that word redeem leapt out of the TV into my heart and it grabbed my, all my attention. And I felt like God say, Lisby, I want you to unlock that word and I want you to take hold of it, particularly for this gathering, and, and, take, and take it and find the real truth underlying in it. So the first thing I did was I went to Isaiah 43. It's a scripture that Pastor David and Lisa Stoner used this morning in his Instagram. <laughs> Amazing. And Pastor Phil used it too. So I'm going to repeat it to us um, because it's such a powerful part of what I'm about to talk about. Isaiah 50, uh, 43 says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. Now, I have taken that scripture many times in my life and put myself in it. And, and, let, let, and as I put myself in it, let that scripture speak over me. But I know in such a time as this, we've been talking about what we're walking through. But what I want to remind you of this morning is whatever God is taking you through, he's not just taking you through it. He's going to redeem you through it, which is why this message is called Redemption Through Loss because I am so aware of everything that you and I may have lost in this season, but I'm going to bring you a message of redemption of the power of God, and it is going to awaken your mojo <laughs> as I take Pastor Sonny's um, um, message, and I think God's going to do something through it. So God, I give you this message. I pray that your redemptive heart, your restorative heart would come through uh, all these computer screens and into people's hearts that you would minister a brand new truth that is going to set people free today in Jesus name, in Jesus name. So redemption through loss. Now, there is a phenomenon that appears in every single household and it is called random lost things. I have a row of single earrings without a partner. I have jigsaw puzzles with important pieces missing from them. I have a plates that have missing chips in them and I don't know where the chips have gone. I have a basket of odd socks and I have no idea. I know you're all going to tell me it's down the washing pipe drain, but I can't find the odd things. I don't know where they've gone. And it is a thing about my home life that irritates me and disturbs me at times. Where do the odd things go? Where do the lost things go? And 
I was thinking about that because loss has been an undeniable hallmark over the last 18 months for us. And we need to be honest about it. We need to be honest about it because we need to get ready to minister into it, all of us. And for me, I have been traveling through my own loss. So this message is still pretty personal and raw. I'm just in the spirit of authenticity telling you that. But there are things in this season that Holy Spirit has said, Lisby, you need to let go of. You need to shed them out of obedience because you cannot walk into the new while you're holding the old. There are other things where I felt a loss of personal control, particularly as being a pastor, that has forced me to let go. And that has not been a bad thing because it's made me go, God, you've got this. You're in control. There's other things I have chosen to let go of. Certain mindsets and thought patterns, I'm like, I'm not having this anymore. <laughs> there are some things I feel that have been stolen from me, if I'm honest. There are other things that are precious that I would rather keep, but they have, but I can't. There are some things that I have lost as I have got older and gained things I would rather not. <laughs> and there are other things I've lost because I have probably been careless. And Steve mentioned it yesterday, I lost my ring, which we did not find. Um, but whether it's been people that I've lost, people who've died that I've cared about this year, whether it's been momentum in church that we've lost, whether it's sleep that I've lost, whether it has been Jake's room turning into a guest room because our oldest son has left home and there's a big grief and a loss, but a celebration in that too. Whether it's been relationships that have changed shape, taking on this beautiful role for Europe, but not being able to travel to see you, losing that ability to see you and my family abroad. Whether it's been a shepherd losing where my sheep are at and not knowing how they're doing at times, there has been loss, but what has tied them all together is this feeling of grief. And the last time I experienced such a concoction of loss was when we moved here 17 years ago and everything around us changed and all I could describe was a season of loss. It's interesting how in, Ecclesi in the Ecclesiastes it says this, it says there is a right time to search, but there is another to count your losses. There is a right time to hold on and there's another time to let go. And I know for you and I that our journeys this year have resembled that, that whether I've been having FaceTime with some of you pastors or coffees with friends, pastoring, I've been watching the news, we all have a story about the consequences of loss. And that is destabilizing many people and it is opening up chasms of pain for people. And many people have summed it up that it's intense, which is why it goes back to the mental health issue. It's an intense season. And grief is interestingly often associated with death. But I found grief far wider than just death, as in somebody's dying. It could be the death of all sorts of things. And for people this year, there has been a burden of, 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 of a loss of finances, that weddings and funerals have been sparse. If you've, even if you've been able to get to one, some people have, will have to watch family funerals online. There have been students missing out on social life. They've lost their graduation. They've lost connect with one another. You may have had friends that have left church and you feel the loss of that in your heart. Some people have lost health due to COVID, lost holidays, hugs, mind space, relationship with God. Some people have lost their intimacy. People have lost vision and people have lost personal control. It's huge. Like it's big. And when people, when things get stripped away from your life, it makes you fragile. There is a vulnerability in your heart that can give birth to fear if we're not careful and insecurity. And I believe, I'm getting to the good bit, <laughs> painting a picture, but I believe there is going to be, and there is already an outpouring of grief across our nations. And for some, it will be vocal and some it will be silent, which is why we need to pay such careful attention to the world around us. We have to not just look at people, but we have to see them the way that Jesus did, see right into their heart. That is the picture that we're in. That has been the, the, the picture of my life. But let me tell you this, because this has been my, my sense of um, strength through this season. Let me read you 1 Peter 5, 9. 
uh, where um, it starts with saying, resist him, resist the enemy, stand firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers, right, this is a bit like us right now, throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. We're all suffering in some way. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, after you've lost and you've grieved and you've been in pain, will himself restore and make you strong and firm and steadfast. I love that scripture because it says to me, God's up to something. God is always up to something that we cannot see. And this is where the word redemption enters the story that I'm talking about, because God is always, always working out his redemptive plan in your life and in my life. He's always ready. He's always poised to, to, to reveal his restorative heart to you and to I. He's always working on the stories that don't look so good right now because he's going to bring things all together for good because he loves us. He is weeping with those who mourn and he is drawing them to himself in this season. He is ministering life to things that need resurrecting and he's about to turn around things in your life that you thought were impossible. And you just have to work through the whole of the Bible story from, from looking at Joseph, from Ruth to Hannah to Job and every one of them, he restored. They had to go through stuff. They had to go through the water, go through the river, go through the fire. But he restored their dignity. He restored their womb to be able to conceive. He restored their status. He restored their family life because he says, you are mine. He said, you are mine. I have called you by name. I have redeemed you. You are mine. And, oh, just stop for a moment. You are his, and his redemptive plan is working in your life. Pastor Phil says this in, uh, in the In Him book, devotional book. I love this. He says, whatever God is connected to will rise. If he is in us, no matter how deeply we are buried in hell, in darkness or in impossibility. If Christ is in us, we have the definite hope of a glorious emergence from that dark place into the glorious portion here and for eternity. Here, not just for eternity, but here, right now, on this day, Saturday, with you and me, you have, the, you have a glorious appearance of God in your life. And Isaiah 54, it says, for your creator will be your husband. The Lord of heaven's army is his name. He is your redeemer, the holy one of Israel, the God of all the earth. And God kept reminding through his prophets of old to his people. He kept saying, I am your redeemer, God. Why? Because they kept getting stuck. They kept getting lost. And he kept saying to them, I'm your redeemer, God. I will redeem you. You need to understand, my people of Israel, what that word means. And to redeem means to buy back. It means to free. It means to restore. It's a beautiful word. My redeemer lives. That's what um, I think Job said at one point. My redeemer lives. It means your father in heaven is always looking for a way to fulfill a promise in your life, to rewrite a narrative, to rescue a situation, to restore what has been broken, to repair what has been damaged, to reestablish what was lost. Why? Because his love is redeeming, because he has a redeeming nature about his love that says, I will buy back and restore everything in your life, but it doesn't always happen the way that we think it will. But let's just come back to this, that that love, that redeeming love that God has for you and I and for the people we need to reach out to, that love took Christ to the cross. It redeemed us on the cross by exchanging his righteousness for our sin. We were once, we were once the lost things. We were once the lost things. But God sent his son to redeem those under law that we might receive adoption to sonship. So God has redeemed you and called you by name to restore you and I to a life of freedom, of forgiveness, of purpose, of love that we didn't always have. It wasn't always part of us. So that means um, God has been saying this to me again and again. He said, Lisby, the nature of my relationship with you 
is redemptive and it will always be so. I am always doing a new thing. That is good theology. We have to get great theology in our lives if we're going to stand and keep being resilient and keep being firm. His relationship is always redemptive. The entirety of God's plan from beginning to end, him being the Alpha and Omega, is based on redemption. That means he sees everything that you and I have lost, have surrendered, have got weary with, have got disappointed by. Nothing escapes him. Nothing. And I was on my uh, walk the other day, uh, a couple of months ago, and I was processing my loss this year with the Spirit of God. And I have learned, tip here, I have learned never to negate my grief or belittle it or say that look at somebody else's grief and go, they've got it far worse than me. They've got much more loss in their life. And sometimes that's good because it takes us to a very healthy sense of gratitude, but we need to be people who walk our own journey and embrace our grief and don't push it away because grief is an incredible teacher. Grief has taught me so much. It's taught me how to build patience and resilience. It's taught me greater compassion for other people. Grief has taught me that I need a healthy coping mechanism to lean on God and go to him and outpour it to him. And I found that you may well say this too, that sometimes when you're in deep grief, it unites you to Christ in a way that nothing else does. And part of our Christian maturity in life is the ability to carry grief and joy simultaneously. But the beauty of it is that God's presence and his promises will always, will always overpower grief if we come to him and we process with him and we push in to him. And as I was praying the other day on this walk with him and on my, with my welly boots and going, God, I just, I was just pouring stuff out. And he said to me, he said, Lisby, the landscape of your life looks different and things are changing, but I am your constant. And I'm the one who will not change. So remember what your constants are, <laughs> what your constants are. So I stopped on this walk and went, right, I need to declare. Everything is about declaring out. I need to declare out the constants in my life, the valuables that will not change because I'm abiding in Christ. And as I started to do that, I felt this redemptive power emerge in my heart. And I realized, you know what, in God, the things that you will never lose are invisible. It's a paradox. But the things that are so strong about your relationship with God and my relationship with God, they're invisible. You can't always see them, but you won't lose them if we stay in Christ. So I started speaking out again. I have an inheritance in Christ. I, my identity is unshakable. I cannot lose it. I cannot be separated from it. I can listen to lies about it from the enemy, but God, you've placed it within a covenant. I will not lose it. I do not lose your promises. They stand forever. God, your nature, your constant nature will never leave me. I may get a hard heart, but your nature will always reveal a redemptive heart to me. I started speaking out that I will never lose his presence, that my hope and my peace are in him. That my calling, not as a pastor, but my calling to reach the lost and to build the house of God, I won't lose it. Not until the day that I go to heaven and there's something else there for me, that I am blessed and I have an anchor. And no matter what I lose, no matter what you lose, you and I have a responsibility to find a place of gratitude. Because in that, we realize what our constants are that will never leave us. So our ministry, our ministry, you and I, our ministry, and I'm calling us, see through Europe, to carry a message of reconciliation and redemption. First into our lives. It's got to go into us. Then into our families. And then into the lives of others, into our church. And that means living with a redemptive mindset. Now, what I mean by this is, is this, is that I, I, I read this somewhere. I was 
I don't know where I read it. And again, I'm one of those people, I read something and all these lights go on. I call it my megaphone moment. It's like, rah, I need to take hold of that and do something with it. And I'm all about mindsets and, and, and changing the way that you think. But I realized that a redemptive mindset is a mindset that responds to everything around you with the filter of God's ability to redeem. Okay. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't give space for grief. Oh, no, no, we have to give space for grief. But my redemptive mindset is when I go to faith to the things that I cannot see, to the things I cannot control, and I declare and I speak over people around me, God's a redemptive father. Now, I don't know how, I, I don't know the whens, the hows, and the whos. We all know that. God redeems in his way. I don't know when he's always going to redeem something. I don't know how he's going to do it. And it's often not the way that we think. And I don't know who he might use to do it either. But my theology in here says God redeems. It's in his redemptive nature. And I'm going to hold on to that resiliently. And we have to build that redemptive mindset by declaring scripture regularly, by speaking the truth of the nature of God, by uprooting any lies that tell us that it's gone forever, that he's not moving, that he doesn't care. We have to uproot those lies. And we need to shape our thoughts with gratitude. Because I tell you what, a redemptive mindset is a beautiful mindset. It's very attractive. We don't want to be flippant and say flippant things to people. But people want the strength of you to come in and go, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. So... It lies in the power of your story. We've been preaching this at church at the moment, that your story, and I'm going to end with this, is very, very important. Whatever your story looks like at the moment, it's not over yet. Uh, the very nature of God's story is it doesn't have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, it just has a beginning and the end when you get to heaven. It's not like a natural story. God's always working something out. And the power of your story, your God's story, is really the evidence of the hand of God in your life, the goodness of God in your life that you did not create. And we are anointed to bring that redemptive message of hope in our pulpits, in our, through our ministry, through our groups, through having dinner with people at the school gate. It doesn't matter where it is. Psalm 107 says, let the redeemed of the Lord, and that's you, right? What areas of your life has he redeemed throughout your life? Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he, he, he redeemed from trouble, from loss. And I look back over my 17 years of living in the Netherlands and every one of those things that I felt was robbed of or lost, he has redeemed. Not one thing has he not touched. It hasn't looked like I thought. It hasn't been in my timing, but that sense of home and family and ministry and calling and, and love and purpose and and, and familiarity, he's created them all. He's redeemed them all when I thought they were gone. I couldn't create them on my own. You can't do it in your own strength, but he can by his power. And that means that you and I are little redeemers. If God is our big redeemer, you and I are called to carry his nature, to carry like the love and the, and the sense of forgiveness and we're called to be little redeemers. That means wherever we go, wherever we walk, whatever we're doing, we carry part of that nature of God because we're made in his image. So that's why when we're around people, it's so good to ask them questions, to love on them, to look at them and in grief, minister truth. So wherever it's in your power and my power to build bridges, to restore what's been broken in our life, to, to, to buy something back, whatever is in our power to redeem, we redeem because that is who we are called to be, reflecting the nature of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I just want to take this message into your hearts right now. I, I really trust that it's done something in you, but I just want you to go to that place in your heart now, just a little bit of ministry time, because I've got some words to speak and I want to speak them differently than a, than a message. So I just speak over you. I want to speak over every pastor. I'm looking now at the screen of pastors. 
because I know that there has been burdens on you this year. And Stephen, I've talked to many of you. And that burden has been one where you have lost things. And uh, it's pretty much all of you have experienced the loss. And I just speak over you that that burden God is going to lift. Right now, he's going to lift it. Father God, I pray over our pastors that your redemptive love would come upon them. I speak redemption. I speak strength that God sees everything that this year has brought to you. And if you're a team member of your church, like I, God is, is ministering to you right now. Spirit of God, redeeming God, lift the burden. I pray that each pastor would know that whether they're going through the fire, the river, the water, you go through them, but you don't just go through them. God, you are going to redeem situations that they cannot imagine right now. And we speak that life and truth over you. I pray over any intensity that has burdened anyone here, where you feel like intense things have been going on and, and everything is like cramping you together. God, I, I speak. We just release. We release you, the spirit of lightness upon you, the spirit of laughter to come back into your life where things have got very, very hard work. God, we pray that you're just, your, your lightness would come in by your spirit and minister into hearts right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh God, I pray for where some of you here, I just felt this was from God to say the other day that some of you here feel like you've lost your children a little bit along the way. This year has been a challenge on your kids that they got a pull of the world, a pull of social media, a pull of something that has been uncomfortable and you're watching on and you as a parent cannot redeem the situation and it feels like it's beyond your control. But God is right in on that right now. And he's saying, I've got you, I've got you. We're going to speak right now. Uh, redemption over your children, that it is not over yet, that the pathway that they appear to be walking God's redemptive plan is working in them. He's going to do something that you cannot see yet because it's in formation, in seed form. We speak the enemy off our children's lives and we declare the redemptive power of God in their lives. You bring people in. You, you, you bring other people around our children to surround them that can speak life and truth. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Spirit of God, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. I just speak to all of you, just hang fast. Be resilient. God is working where you cannot see. He's creating and forming in something that you are not aware of yet. That, we all know that's how diamonds are formed because the best of diamonds can cope with the intense pressure and the beautiful ones come to the surface. And God, maybe you may feel like loss has been an intense pressure on you this year. But believe me, he will redeem those. He will redeem everything to bring it out in the open, that you are going to be a man or a woman of integrity. He's able to stand like Job did and say, I lost a lot of things, but God has redeemed my life. He's put me back on solid ground. He has blessed me. And that will be the story of your life. God is creating a story. And it is not over yet. So thank you all for just being here. I, I'm going to keep speaking this word over all of C3 Europe for the next year. So if you come to me, I'll be speaking redemptive power of God over you. It is the most freeing, light experience to know that he's in control and we're not. And there is a plan to restore all of us and all our churches to a place that is going to be absolutely incredible. We're going to watch each other's restorative processes, and we're going to just be cheering each other on. So preach it, speak it, believe it, do good theology. Well, Lord, we thank you for your living word. We thank you that it ministers to people, and it goes out with purpose. It's not just an empty encouragement, but it's a powerful pick-me-up for where we're at. Lord, I thank you for that word. We thank you for Lisby and Steve. Pray you bless their ministry. And uh, anyone who hears that word today or whenever you're listening to this, I pray it's real food for your soul. Well, thanks for being with us this morning. Like I said, if you can get over to us at any time, that would be really, really great. You'd meet us, the people of God, the presence of God in person, that would be great. But if not, we're so happy to be still delivering church for you online. 
God bless. See you online very soon.